This tank is currently one week old and a lot has changed so far. A lot of plants have died. I've got a lot of new plants. So this update's going to be super big. If you guys haven't seen the previous video, I'll put a card up top in the corner to go check that out right now to see what the tank used to look like compared to now. But anyways, let's get started. Hey, what's up guys? It's Calum or Calum's Fish Tanks and today is the one week update on the 40 gallon breeder. Um, as you guys know, it's not doing the greatest as I've hinted to in the last video I posted, but uh, it's surviving. So anyways, I'll show you guys things a bit more in depth. So this corner is where the Rotala bonsai used to be planted and um, that all died. I'll get to why all the plants died later, but I'm just gonna show you guys what I have for now. But I'm gonna replace it with Stargani Repens and uh, that should be a bit shorter, have the same green, missing the yellow tip. So kind of create the same effect, but you know, I may uh, try to grow it out a bit taller. Behind that is my Ludwigia Arcuata. Um, the other stuff died, so I used some replacement from a different tank to uh, kind of fill in. I only have about six stems though, so it's going to take a lot longer. On this log in the back, I don't know if you can see it, but there's three of my auto sinkless catfish. Yesterday I actually picked up two more, so there's currently five in this tank. They're becoming one of my favorite fish, and I'm hoping to get that up to maybe eight or ten eventually but I'm gonna do it slowly because uh, there's not enough algae in the new tank to feed them all and uh, yeah so right in this crack is where my AR mini used to be um, this plant was really starting to do good before my incident but uh, right now it's still holding on no new growth but it's not died back all the way some still have roots so hopefully they'll come back as you can see there's lots of like dead plant matter in the area so hopefully uh, this plant will bounce back, but uh, if not, I'll have to go get another tissue culture because it's one of my favorite plants and there's not really much that you can uh, replace it with, with the kind of effect it brings to the scape. It's a super beautiful plant and there's all my Crebensis. They're all always fighting between the four of them and then they're just a rowdy bunch. So the Monte Carlo is seeming to be growing fine so far. Um, it hasn't died back at all because this isn't one of the plants I treated. It was immersed grown. And uh, I guess I'll tell you guys now what happened to my other plants. So when I was treating them with hydrogen peroxide, I never uh, removed them. What you're supposed to do is you're only supposed to leave them in for five minutes or so. I left my plants probably for two or three hours. So I'm surprised how good some plants are doing like my Trident Java Fern. It's still holding on. As well as, oops, sorry guys, as well as some of my uh, Bisa Philandra and other plants. But uh, most plants did die back, so I am, uh, I'm kind of recovering, taking plants from other tanks, trying to fill the gaps that I left open. So, uh, yeah. So here's a couple of the new additions plant-wise. As you can see down here, I have some Christmas or Weeping Moss. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, that I just tied onto the wood recently. And as well as up here, I tied on some sponges as well as some mini rose moss. And the rose moss helps it attach to a more porous... The sponge helps the rose moss attach to something more porous compared to the wood. Because this kind of wood is super solid and hard to attach to for mosses. So the, the, if the Christmas moss is having trouble attaching, I'm going to use some sponges to make that attach. The other kind of moss I got, it's up on that rock, I don't know how well you can see, on that uh, piece of wood, right in the center of your screen, that's Fissidens Jeppy, or Gepi, I don't know, um, and that I attached as well to um, the sponges, so hopefully that'll do well. This moss I've been wanting for a while, um, and I'm really happy to finally be getting some Fissidens in this tank, because that's one of the few original plants I wanted to get when I started my original 40 breeder way back. Here is uh, the pygmy chainsword and it is not looking too good but it has some roots so I'm, I think it may hold on a bit. So hopefully that will bounce back because that's also another hard plant to replace without getting tissue culture. I may be able, be able, to, I may be able to use something like Blixa japonica or dwarf sage. Dwarf sage actually grows too, plant, uh, grows too fast so I don't know what I may replace that with if it does die. But uh, I'll find something. I may put some more S repens over here because that plant is kind of similar in growth. But anyways, now around to the back of the tank. 
So in the back here, we have some more Rotala bonsai. This is another plant that completely died back, but I did have some backup stock that I had just planted in my brother's tank that I took back for myself. And uh, it's doing pretty good. It's sending off some roots and the plants are looking like uh, they're doing pretty good. The bottoms are red, the tops are pretty green. So uh, that's just kind of saying how my lighting is. I've been running the light on 50% and doing water per ch changes every single day. So there hasn't been a lot of nutrients and I'm not really giving algae a chance as well as I'm not really uh, giving my plants an excess of nutrients, which I will in the future. So I replaced the Limnophilia aromatica with Pogo stem on erectus because this is the only plant I had similar that would uh, grow like it because I do not have any more Limnophilia aromatica and I think this plant will do a great job filling the spot that it would have. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. It's not too big of a replacement. Um, and hopefully it'll look nice. Back in this area is where my Berkeley longifolia used to be and it uh, completely died back but I know the bulb is still under there so I'm going to give it some time and I hope it bounces back. Back here is a plant I've been looking for for a long time. It's one of the original plants I wanted to get when I started up this 40 breeder but unfortunately I filled up my tank with other plants that I wasn't too fond of and unfortunately uh, I never had room to get this one and had a hard time finding again, finding it again. But this is Hygrophilia pinnatifida or pinnatifada, and I think it's doing going to do really great in this tank. And hopefully, I'll get some nice reds and browns out of it, maybe even purples too. Down this path of uh, the tank is pretty empty because of all my um, what plant Rotella macrandra dying again. Um, I'm really bummed about that, but it also didn't survive the hydrogen peroxide as well as most of the other plants. Excuse the cords, but back here is what's left of the crypts. They completely melted back, but really quickly they're sending up new growth. So I'm hoping uh, that they bounce back soon and hopefully I'll have some big crypts again. But anyways, now back to the front of the tank. So here is uh, almost a full shot of the 40 breeder. Um, so what I'm doing for maintenance is as I said earlier, I'm doing a water change every single day. So nutrients don't get a chance to build up as well as um, I'm trying to get in some nutrients temporarily for the plants. So I'm dosing 4 par parts per million of nitrate and 0 0.5 parts per million of phosphate every second day as well as um, enough flourish um, comprehensive to get 0 0.1 parts per million of iron into the aquarium. Um, I'm using Rotala butterfly to figure out my uh, dosing amounts and I'm using dry ferts as well as the flourish comprehensive to do this and things are going well so far I haven't noticed a significant amount of growth because I'm putting the lights on halfway and plants take a while to get their roots set up usually two or so weeks um, so anyways that pretty much wraps it up for this tank nothing big has really happened in this week except for everything dying and there's re really no growth to show because I've kind of just been recovering from it and uh no really fish changes except for two more autosynclus catfish. And I hope to get rid of some of these guppies in the future. As well as maybe the crebensis because they're kind of bullies. And they kind of pick on a lot of the other fish in the aquarium. So they may go as well and I may try to turn this into a more nano tank. With a larger school of harlequin rasboras. As well as I'm breeding out some of the praecox rainbows in a pond in my backyard. So hopefully I'll have quite a bit more of those to come into this tank. I think right now if I put in the babies and the adults I have, I'd have a total of 10 Praycox Rainbows. I didn't leave them breed for long, so I only got a small batch. But anyways, that's it guys for today. Thank you guys for watching. There should be another midweek video coming up soon. Anyways, this was Kalem's Fish Tanks. See you guys next time. Peace.